This is Jamaica Magazine and I'm Adrian Atkinson. Whether you want to call it blessed or lucky, Hurricane Matthew lingered but barely affected the island. This weekend we sing praises of happiness while keeping our eyes on Tropical Storm Nicole. So please stick with us as we discuss matters of national importance. <music> Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, October 7. Government has signed a contract to buy two new fire trucks for the Jamaica Fire Brigade. The local government ministry signed the contract with manufacturer Rosenbaugh yesterday. Valued at $987,822, US dollars, the pumper trucks are being manufactured in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States and will be delivered in mid-2017. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says this signing represents the start of a number of improvements that the administration will be making to the fire service. To make them much more reliable, to make them more efficient, and to give them the kind of support that is required in executing their responsibilities. He says that in this financial year, work will start on one of the three new fire stations to be built in St. James, St. Thomas, and St. Mary. The National Water Commission, NWC, says it expects to complete work in a few days on the damaged sewer line that caused the breakaway on a section of Constant Spring Road in the vicinity of the Marketplace Complex. NWC's Corporate Public Relations Manager, Charles Buchanan, says the agency initiated the emergency procurement arrangement to engage a contractor to repair the damaged sewer line. He says every effort will be made to have it done in the shortest time possible. The breakaway off the road surface has reduced the affected section of Constant Spring Road to single lane traffic. The National Works Agency says motorists should use alternative routes where possible. Those who use Constant Spring Road are advised to expect delays as only two of the five lanes are accessible to vehicular traffic at this time, one lane for northbound traffic and one for southbound traffic. The Jamaica Customs Agency, JCA, is warning importers to desist from importing goods without the relevant permits, concealing those goods and making a false declaration or face the full penalty of the law. The warning follows yet another find in which the JCA says an importer attempted to conceal a motorcycle without the requisite permit and make a false declaration to the customs agency. The breach was discovered on September 30 when the Border Protection Unit's fast anti-smuggling team found disassembled bike parts that would comprise a whole motorcycle while doing routine check of four barrels at the Port Handler's Warehouse at Freeport in Montego Bay. The importer had initially declared that the barrels only contained food, clothing, and some bike parts. The importer was informed that he was in breach of Section 210 of the Customs Act, and the entire shipment has since been detained by the agency. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed is endorsing Michael University College's establishment of an ePay cashless school program. ePay, which is owned and operated by Alliance Payment Services Limited, is designed to save the university time and money by improving security, safety, and efficiency. The ePay cards will have a wide range of features and uses, including campus access, settling payments, and making purchases both on and off the grounds of the institution. About 2,000 students enrolled at the 180-year-old institution are likely to benefit. Minister Reid has lauded the school for pioneering the initiative, which was launched on Wednesday. I'm glad that the Michael University College is set an example for the other teachers' colleges for implementing this cashless system. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, this is the way of the future. As the country observes National Tree Planting Day, Education Minister Senator Ruel Reid is appealing to Jamaicans to protect the environment as a means of minimizing potential devastation from natural disasters such as hurricanes. We have seen, of course, unfortunately, the devastation uh, weakness in Haiti with the passage of Hurricane Matthew and the fact that a lot of trees have been um, cut down over time. And so we are signaling to Jamaica the need to protect our environment and we want to congratulate the forestry department for this initiative 
and that Jamaicans will take note. The minister was speaking with JIS News after taking part in this morning's opening ceremony to mark National Tree Planting Day at the Charles Chin Loy Basic School in Kingston. He says the activity was an important one for the children to witness and get involved with. First of all, it is supporting the need for the school to achieve a particular standard, standard four in the safety and security element of the early childhood development standard and also an opportunity for the children who participated in the activity this morning to see us planting trees, the teamwork that was exhibited and more important, a lesson being taught how we protect the environment. There's, there's need for us to always plant trees so that uh, the trees benefit our environment by producing oxygen that makes our uh, environment healthier. Prime Minister Andrew Holness and other government officials also participated in National Tree Planting Day activities. And finally, government is appealing to the public to donate to the Help Haiti initiative. While Jamaica was spared the wrath of Hurricane Matthew, it is reported that the storm killed hundreds of people in Haiti and destroyed the country's national infrastructure. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, has been charged with coordinating Jamaica's relief assistance to the country. Through its Help Haiti initiative, ODPEM is asking Jamaicans to donate bottled water, non-perishable food items and tarpaulins. Items should be sent to ODPEM's headquarters at 2 to 4 Haining Road, Kingston 5. Cash donations can also be made to any branch of the National Commercial Bank to account number 212387304. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. I remember when I didn't like school and mommy used to have to wake me up. Tabla, hurry up. You're going to be late for school. Hey, now that I have a tablet, you don't need to wake me up. Since mommy and daddy bought me a tablet, I use my tablet for all kinds of cool stuff. I use my tablet to read books. I use my tablet to learn about history and science. I use my tablet to help with my homework. I even use it to talk to my daddy at work. Hello, daddy! Learning is easy and fun with a tablet. Take care of your tablet, use it wisely. Human trafficking is now being taught in the nation's schools. The curriculum was rolled out in more than 500 primary and secondary institutions at the start of the new academic year in September. This became necessary as a number of Jamaicans, particularly young boys and girls, were being trafficked. This week on School Zone, preventing the occurrence of this modern-day slavery activity. There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying Oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life The greatest gift of all What do you know about human trafficking? Do you know that there are cases of this modern-day slavery even here in Jamaica? Welcome to another week of School Zone. I'm Tamar McHale. Today we come from the Trenchtown High School giving you highlights of a trafficking in person seminar put on by the Ministry of Justice in partnership with the Kiwanis Club of New Kingston. Promises to be quite informative. Stay with me. Picture this. A 16-year-old Jamaican girl, Christian all her life, graduated from school. She wanted a job, like many of us. What did she do? She looked in the classified advertisement. She found it, a job, an accountant. She qualified for the job overseas, in a foreign country. She saw a number, a telephone number, attached to the advertisement. She gladly called the number. It was answered on second ring. The person who answered was a female. The person told her to meet her in halfway tree at the bus park. They met. They discussed. She immediately got the job. She didn't have a passport, so she was assisted by the female to procure the passport on emergency. She was assisted also with the plane ticket to fly. 
Her brother gave her $30,000 Jamaican in support of the travel overseas. They were supposed to have left Jamaica within the week of getting the passport. She spoke to her mother on the morning of travel. She said, Mommy, me no feel like go. Guess what mommy told her? Girl, galang, you know, see the old house one fix. When she reached immigration, because she was accompanied by the person who employed her, when she reached immigration in that foreign country, she was told what to tell the immigration officer. Do you want me to tell you what they told her to tell the immigration? She was actually told to tell immigration that she was there on vacation for two weeks only. Remember, she knew she wanted a job and had gotten the job. Actually, she got six months in the country. When she left immigration, she was escorted through a side door in that airport, and she was placed in an aircraft. Why? Because the persons who employed her owns aircrafts. Whilst airborne, though, she was given six pairs of lingerie. You understand that, correct? And said, sister, the work, the accountant work that you came for is not up here. Instead, guess what? You have to sell sex. We'll check back to hear how this girl's story turned out. More than 200 students of Trenchtown High listened keenly to that harrowing tale at their school seminar. They, along with parents, teachers, civic members, and government representatives, including the police, confronted the complex and dangerous issue head on. Human trafficking is an issue that affects every single person who is alive. It is a problem that destroys the lives of its victims and their families and communities. It is viewed as something that happens overseas, mainly outside the Caribbean, and we refuse to believe that such horrendous activities could be perpetrated against our citizens and even worse against our children. Human trafficking affects men, women and children. Victims are often forced into prostitution or hard labor and are exploited and abused while deprived of basic rights. Most of all their freedom. Lord usually into this unknowingly often through promises of job opportunities and a better life. Always a better life. They operate on poverty. The crime is worth, on an annual basis, US $32 billion. It's the most underreported crime in the world. Christ feed the multitude, the only one loaf of bread. Poor people, there is something for you. Don't let the pressures of the system get upon your head. Poor people, there is something for you. The Office of the Children's Registry was also on hand to ensure students knew what to look out for. You ever hear? Prevention better than cure. Written in the book of life, we shall live forevermore. But if you have a friend that have a big yard and have a daughter, and that daughter has a cousin that you don't really know will hurt her, but you have a suspicion about it. You made a report. We don't need you to establish that it's human trafficking. That's for the police, okay? So you will tell that information to whomever you trust. Call 1-888-PROTECT, right? Or tell, just tell somebody who you trust and the investigation will be done. When advertisements for overseas work appear in the media, the task force calls and check them out or they just wait until an abuse is happened. Before they start any such recruitment, they need to get the permission of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. We have a multi-agency approach to investigating human trafficking. So we know that the Ministry of Labor has investigators as well. But at the police level, our job is to do a proactive policing approach. So what we do, once the advertisements have landed fresh off the press, our investigations would have started. But as you are aware, there are also advertisements online, meaning on Facebook, Twitter, etc. We do police some of that, but the locals, local ones, we have a handle on it.
So be careful when seeking a job and in this age of social media, don't post everything online. The government of Jamaica having accepted that this exists in Jamaica and it has crippling effects on our people. So the task force was established and we have several strategies and things that we do to tackle the monster. Speaking of tackling the monster, remember our 16-year-old friend who got tricked into selling sex instead of the accountant work? What happened to her? She was taken to a go-go club and there were criminal gunmen watching her every move. Her passport was taken from her and other travel documents. Her cell phone was removed from her and she had to sell sex. Upon selling the fourth sex, a good Samaritan came in to purchase sex, but fell in love with her because she's really attractive. And what did he do? He smuggled her through the back door in the club into police station. And because of that good venture, she led police to rescue two other Jamaicans. Now, could that happen to any of us? Too easy. This could happen to anyone. And your biggest weapon is to be aware. We found the seminar quite useful because most of our students are from the inner city and so you find that they're actually from backgrounds of low socioeconomic um, status. And you find that these are the children that are targeted for human tra trafficking. Students who are in economic need and so, you know, it's important as a part of their education for this social awareness. I thought that they gave a lot of good examples about this um, human trafficking and that it's affecting students and young people that just come out of school and all of that. And I believe that we should be more aware about our, our surroundings and what, what is really happening to us. Remember, if you have queries about employment adverts that you see or opportunities to work abroad, contact the Ministry of Labor at 922-9500-14. Children, if you are walking on the road and somebody comes and tries to grab you, scream for help, murder, and run. The penalty for those caught trafficking in persons is up to 20 years in prison and or a fine determined by the court. And if you or a child you know is being abused or being lured into trafficking, report it to the Office of the Children's Registry at 1888 Protect. That is 1 888 776 8328. Trust you found this episode of School Zone to be quite enlightening. I know I have. Together, let us care and protect to fight human trafficking. Till next time, I'm Tamara McHale for School Zone. It's important to store water during periods of drought. It's even more important to ensure that the water is safe. Boiling and treating your water with bleach are two of the best ways to purify water. If you choose the boiling method, allow the water to boil for five minutes, cover and let it cool. Store boiled water in a clean airtight container and use something with a handle to take out the water when needed. If you use bleach to make your water safe for drinking, use two drops of bleach to a liter of water, eight drops for a gallon and half teaspoon of bleach for five gallons of water. Shake well and leave for half an hour before use. Water is essential to a healthy life, so ensure yours is clean and safe for consumption. A Help Haiti initiative has been launched in response to the devastating effects of Hurricane Matthew on our neighboring country. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, is the central coordinating agency for this initiative. Jamaicans and local entities wishing to offer help should do so through this agency. ODPEM will arrange for all disaster relief supplies, including donations of cash or kind, for the Help Haiti initiative.
Please take note of the following priority items that can be sent to Odprem, located at 2 to 4 Haining Road in St. Andrew. Bottled water, non-perishable food items, and tarpaulins. Cash donations can be made to any branch of the National Commercial Bank, NCB. The Help Haiti Initiative, NCB, account number is 21-238-7304. We were spared the wrath of Hurricane Matthew, but unfortunately, that's not the case for Haiti. Artists, dancers, songwriters, protect your work from copycats and secure your intellectual property. The Intellectual Property Rights Law guards the rights of owners of creative works in the scientific, industrial, literary, artistic, musical and dramatic fields. It covers several areas. Protect your net worth. Protect your legacy. Build Jamaica's creative and industrial industry. For more details on protecting your creative expression, contact the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. We are here to celebrate. We are here as one big fa family. We are here to put our differences aside and celebrate a man who has contributed to all of us being here tonight to celebrate a music that is the best in the world. It's good to be white when you're young. for one enjoy yourself and have lots of fun the garden is my friend and it will never die enjoy Tell them 
We've come to the end of Jamaica Magazine for this Friday. Thanks for spending time with us. Remember to keep up to date with the latest government information. Join us online at gis.gov.jm or watch our programs on our YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our social media platforms. You may also catch a new edition of Jamaica Magazine tomorrow on this very station. Until then, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Have yourselves a great evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.